right now we're going to take uh, one more look at making class diagrams and this time we're going to use a more complex example um, you can see my slides online so I won't leave this one up but this is a description of a group project system where uh, students are enrolled in a course and that that course has a bunch of projects and students can sign up to projects and they also get to pick which projects they want to be attached to each project has a task a lab place a day a maximum size and a leader and there's an administrator which allocate people and kind of move them in and out as as need be so a good question to ask at this point is how do we pick what are classes or objects in our diagram well a really simple place to start is with the nouns in the previous example so if you read through that you'll see that we've got a course is a noun a student is a noun a project is a noun and this kind of lab place is also a noun and we can implement all four of those as specific classes in fact that'll be a good design decision to do however just having those is not a guarantee that you've got all the necessary classes or objects and not necessarily all of them need to be classes. Um, we'll discuss this more in a coming video, but just be aware that nouns are a good place to start, but they are not the be all and end all. They mostly comprise what we call the data classes. But let's have a look at those to start off with. So we have kind of got five data classes that we could begin with. So um, the first thing we do, I'm going to ignore the administrator class for the moment, just mostly to make things fit nicely on the slide. It's not super important. We can add it in later on. We're going to start with these four classes. And if we go back to the text description, we can ask ourselves, what attributes do these classes have? Well, in the text description, the project class clearly has a task, a day, and a max size. So we put those attributes in and we give them types. And I've said that the task and the day are string, and then the max size is an integer. I could alternatively have said that the day is a date object rather than a string, but I decided to leave it as day, assuming that it meant day of the week. What you'll notice, however, for the other three classes is that while our text description of our system didn't specifically require a course code, an ID, or a location for the lab room, we've got them in there already to help you identify different instances of the same class and it's quite important that each of your class will have an attribute that allows you to differentiate between different instances of the same class so we're going to give each student an id each lab room a location and each course a course code so we know that they are different um, in general it's quite rare to have a class or create a class or need a class that has no attributes or behavior whatsoever so those are the attributes that we've got then we'll add in our associations and we can we can see from the text description that projects need a room projects also need students and are attached to a course courses need students and projects and students need courses and projects as well what we then do is label them and this is just a description of that relationship so the enrolled in association is what associates students and courses what's the association well a student is enrolled in a course this one here the association between course and project is a little bit more simple we're saying each course will have several projects which is why we use the plural in there sorry um, and then if we look at the relationship between project and lab room we know that each project only requires one room so we just use the um, the label lab rather than labs which would imply there's more than one but if you go back again to that text description, you'll notice that there are actually multiple associations between student and project. There's not just the projects students are assigned to, but students also have a list of projects as preferences, and they will uh, each uh, a project will also have a leader student. And we can add multiple associations in between the same classes as long as we use different descriptors to describe them. How we've been dealing with associations so far is that we've been adding these descriptor titles to them like projects. However, another thing you'll commonly see in class diagrams are <clears throat> uh, these descriptors on either end of the association. These are called roles and they essentially describe what role that association plays for each class. So for the project class, for example, we will see course uh, will appear as a, as a field within that class once we create it in code similarly within course projects will appear as some field it'll probably appear as an array list if I had to guess um, and these give us the names of the fields that we'll use when we are implementing these classes you can combine these two approaches here but we'll see some limitations of that in a moment 
So all the relationships I've talked about so far, all these associations have been bi-directional. And we draw bi-directional relationships like this with just a line. Occasionally it'll be a line with arrows on both ends. And this is essentially saying both classes in their association need to know about each other. And so in the code, uh, ultimately they will have a, a field for each class. However, the, another form of relationship, and in fact a preferable one if you're going to code it up, is a unidirectional relationship, i.e. one where one class needs to know about the other, but the other class doesn't need to know about it. In our example, this is the association between project and lab room. So a project needs to know which room it is attached to, and it must have one. On the other hand, the lab room doesn't need to know what project or what student or what course is in it, it just needs to know where it is and how many students can occupy it. Because that's a unidirectional relationship, we draw it like this with an arrow at one end, and because it's a one-way relationship, we don't need roles, we don't need labels on both ends, because project is the only class that will actually have this field of room in it. Lab room won't have any field within here connecting it to its project because it doesn't need to know about it. Finally, we can look at the multiplicities of some of these associations, and they're reasonably simple. Um, this multiplicity here means for each project, every project must have one course. It can't have no courses, and it can't be attached to more than one. On the other hand, a course here, every course can have no projects or can have as many projects as you want. And we signify that by writing zero dot dot star. A shorthand for this is just writing the star by itself that we've got down the bottom. They both mean exactly the same thing. To contrast, the relationship between course and student, every student needs a course and can't have no courses. It can't have more than one course in this particular version of the problem. And vice versa, every course needs at least one or more students. There's no maximum number that a course can have uh, that we've set here, although we could set one later on. So if you do want to set upper and lower bounds, you just uh, label them as I've done down here on the bottom. So if we had one to five, um, we'd write it down as one dot dot five. For the more, more complicated multiplicities, however, quite often in class diagrams you'll see a little arrow attached to the descriptor of these associations, and that just gives some information about the direction of a relationship. For example, a student will have a list of preferences of projects, and that means the preferences relationship will appear in student. It won't need to appear in project even though it is a bi-directional relationship. It's the same as the assigned to. Students will need to know what projects they're assigned to, um, but it is a relationship between student and project, so it will appear over here. By contrast, a project will have a leader attached to it, and that leader will be a specific student. So that leader relationship will appear in the project, not in the student class. And if we look at the associations of them, we can see they're pretty similar to what we've seen before. So this, this here, 0 0.1 means every project either doesn't have a leader or has one leader. We can't have more than one. And this relationship here says that a student can be a leader in as many different projects as they want. Uh, this relationship here says we can't assign more than 10 students to a project, uh, and we can assign zero students to a project if necessary, but a student can be assigned to as many projects as they like. This one at the top is probably the most interesting. It's essentially saying uh, a student can pick as many different projects in their preferences as possible, but the order in which they do that is important. And so rather than just having the star or the zero dot dot star, because remember they mean the same thing, we write this little uh, tag here called ordered. And ordered means the order in which that relationship occurs is important. And this will dictate the collection type we use to implement it when we code it up. Another example that I haven't shown here is not unique. So with these stars down here, we assume natively that this is a unique relationship. So we can't assign, for example, the same student to um, at the same project multiple times. It makes no sense. Uh, similarly, we can't assign uh, the same student to the leadership role of the same project multiple times. That makes no sense. However, in many, in some cases, you don't want to enforce that uniqueness. And so you would write not unique in these little curly brackets uh, near there if you wanted to imply that as part of the multiplicity. And that's it for the more complicated example. Next video, we'll take you through how to add behavior to these class diagrams.